This is Valley News Live at 10. And thanks for staying up late with us. Happening now, several emergency vehicles have responded to a crash in Fargo. It shut down a portion of 45th Street South. Valley News Team's Kaylee Chella is there and joins us now live with the latest Kaylee. Yeah, thanks, Stacey Justin. So I'm on 45th Street South, right south of 45th Avenue South. And as you can see behind me, there are multiple police cars. Earlier when I got here at about 1025, police said that they had gotten here about 25 minutes before me. So at about 1005, there's an accident with this black car that you can see. It, what I'm being told from friends of the people that were in the car is it crashed into the motorcycle right next to it. I was told by the friend of the driver of that black car that they had just gotten it a few days prior. Same thing goes for the motorcycle. And the worst part of this is both of the drivers were really young. The friend told me the driver of that black car was just 18 years old. So that could have been a factor in the crash as well as with that car being relatively new. When I first got here at again about 1025, the officers were working to put the car's flames out. The car had started on fire. They were using uh, sandbags as well as water from fire trucks to put that fire out. The person who was on the motorcycle was transferred to Sanford Hospital. We're still working to learn the condition of that driver. And you can stick with Valley News Live, the only team that was here for this live report. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, Kaylee. Well, to the forecast now, the weekend is here and it's shaping up to be warm. First Alert Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson joins us now live with the details. Hutch. Uh, Justin, Stacy, and basketball fans are weather delightful today and that moon just gorgeous as it rose through those clouds here. I'll give you a full screen look at kind of tell you temperatures still fairly mild and quiet weather continues into our early overnight hours. Here's a look at your current picture from the Devil's Lake home of economy camera. All this warm weather and melting causing rivers to rise. We have our first flood warning issued by the National Weather Service. This is for the Snake River at Warren in Marshall County, Minnesota. Now it rose very quickly today. It's expected to crest somewhere in the minor flood stage as we go through Saturday. We'll keep our eyes on that this morning. It's hard to keep our eyes on anything. We had visibility down to zero with fog, and that's going to be a problem again tonight with temperatures dropping below freezing. Running water causing some problems on area roads that are, well, uh, the gravel variety. Watch out for washouts. Be extra careful, particularly in the nighttime hours. We'll go over that weekend forecast here in just a couple of moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. We have some breaking news this evening. America's longest serving congressperson, Representative Don Young of Alaska, has died. According to a statement from his office, the Republican passed away while traveling home to Alaska. Young was first elected to the U.S. House in 1973, known in his later years for his off-the-cuff, often abrasive style. Young was 88 years old. New tonight, two people are hurt and a man has been charged for causing a crash in Fargo. Police say just after 9 this morning, they responded to a call about a reckless driver near 13th Avenue and the I-29 overpass. Police say the driver, now identified as Richard Vera, sped through the intersection and crashed into two other cars. They say he then ditched the car and tried to run, but officers were able to find him pretty quickly. He's been referred for charges of aggravated reckless driving, leaving the scene of an injury accident, and operating a motor vehicle without a valid license or insurance. Police say two people in the cars he hit sustained minor injuries. Even before gas prices were skyrocketing, some FM area drivers were not paying for their gas. Folks at Don's Car Washes say when they punched their numbers last year, they found their gas prices weren't matching up with their sales. They say 55 drivers filled up their tanks and then just took off without paying a dime just in one month last November. It has been going on, like ongoing. We have sheets and sheets of just license plates and vehicle types and everything. So it's been happening, but then it just started to get more and more. The Minnesota toddler that triggered yesterday's Amber Alert is now safe at home with his mom. The Pope County Sheriff's Office has identified the man arrested for the kidnapping as Victor Ramirez of Big Lake, Minnesota. Investigators say they found the child after a 911 caller said he was in a garage. The child was taken to a St. Cloud hospital before being returned to his mom. Though they share the same last name, police have not confirmed if Robert and the kidnapper are related. Stick with Valley News Live as we work to learn more.
China could face some stiff economic sanctions, the U.S. and Western European nations, if it decides to help the Russian military with their attack on Ukraine. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi spoke for nearly two hours today. Two U.S. officials recently said Vladimir Putin is asking China to provide his country with financial and military support during their invasion. Meanwhile, we're learning more about the Minnesota man killed in Ukraine this week. 68-year-old Jimmy Hill left for the country in December, but he never made it back. Family and friends say his body was found by police who believe he died while standing in line for bread. Aaron Hassanzada spoke to those who knew him best. I knew if I didn't, I might not have a chance. Karen Mosley said goodbye to her longtime friend Jimmy Hill last week over Messenger. That's Jimmy. He was trapped in a hospital there to support his Ukrainian partner and her long-term battle with MS. And Jimmy replied to me, Let's hope we meet again. No man is guaranteed tomorrow. We don't know where my brother's body is. Jimmy's sister says they don't know if they'll ever see him again. The hardest thing that we're going to have to go through is not having that kind of closure. And for Jimmy's classmates from Matamidi High School. It's disbelief. It's like, how, how did this happen? How could this happen to, to, to a kid from Matamidi? The worst case scenario happened. Jimmy documented his final days on social media, saying there was intense bombing, little food, and no way out. He would let me know how the bombing was, how far away it was. He would let me know how Irina was. Karen's understanding from Jimmy was that he volunteered to duck out of the hospital for food or water for others trapped inside. The more someone needs help, the more likely Jimmy was going to help you. And that didn't surprise Paul Anderson. I can imagine Jimmy doing something like that. I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. He wanted the world to be a better place, and he made it a better place. In other news tonight, Moderna is asking the FDA to authorize a second COVID-19 booster for all adults. Earlier this week, Pfizer also requested FDA approval of a second booster, but only for seniors. Meanwhile, health experts are still urging millions of Americans to get their first shot. If you ask me, will things go well, I'll, I'll return the uh, answer by saying, will everyone do their part? And if everyone does their part, then yes. If not, Get ready, because this thing has taken us on a wild ride. The CDC is keeping a close eye on the sub-variant of Omicron called BA2. Case numbers are already surging again in Europe and Asia. Today is day nine without school in Minneapolis. Educators continue to strike, but they say they're hopeful they can reach a deal soon. Earlier today, teachers rallied outside the governor's residence. They're asking for higher pay better benefits, more mental health services for students, among other things. They're hoping for a deal perhaps as soon as this weekend. I'm ready to go back to school on Monday, so my fingers and toes and eyes, everything is crossed right now in the hopes that we can figure it out so we can continue learning. I think we've had an amazing bargaining team, and so all of us trust what they're doing for us at the table. Meanwhile, the lawsuit for the Arizona man who says North Dakota's law enforcement violated his civil rights during Dakota Access Pipeline protests is getting another look. Back in 2016, Marcus Mitchell reached an agreement with the state to dismiss the charges against him. Mitchell then sued various North Dakota officials and law enforcement, saying they violated his rights, shot him with lead-filled bean bags, shattered his eye socket. District court previously dismissed his claims, though, with prejudice, but a federal court disagreed. Now a judge has sent it back to district court to be looked at again. Fargo police are getting ready to launch a new online reporting system in hopes of freeing up officers and focusing on public safety. People will be able to report low-level, low-priority crimes online. Chief Dave Zabolski says it can be used for situations where there's no safety risk, you're not witnessing a crime in progress, or the suspect isn't known. Zabolski says last year a similar program helped eliminate 6,500 calls. The new online system launches March 28th. Still ahead on Valley News Live, with all the melting snow, there is more than just puddles on the ground. We'll introduce you to the guys who can help clean up what your pet may have left behind. And ew, the temperatures were warm today. 50s in the James River Valley, 40s for many of the rest of us. We started out very foggy. And there could be more fog in your forecast. Hour by hour details are coming up. Weather is next.